Dr. Rob Zadiska, what is going on, my friend? I love our opening song. It, I'm just putting that out there. It, it is it is a really cool song. Let's, let's just listen to it a little bit. I think I might have heard this because I got it on like some royalty free. I purchased the song, got it on some royalty free site. I, years ago. Years ago. I mean, but this I, has to be what ten years now. Uh, I don't know if it's quite ten years, but it's 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 getting pretty close. But I think I heard it like on an actual TV commercial the other day. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's our song, man. You've got the rights. I've heard it before on YouTube videos. And have you? Like, oh, yeah. Have you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I hope nobody ever like manages, like, is it like purchases like full usage or like exclusive usage yeah, yeah, rights have, to it? I have full usage to it, but I don't have exclusive rights to it. Yeah, what I wonder is if at some point that happens and somebody could come after us and say, yeah, you can't use our song anymore. You know, I, I must have pretty good taste because I also do a Tuscany podcast called Total Tuscany. And I heard my opening song on a TV commercial. I'm like, oh, I must have a pretty good ear for <laughs> like just canned uh, commercial music, right? I remember when I first used that song. I used it at MCO Construction. I was doing stories on our employees and our owners, and I used it. Gary Leapley, who is one of our owners, that's the L and MCL, he's a big, he fixes up cars. I mean, he's got some really nice cars, and I thought that was kind of a muscle car type song. So yeah, that, that's where I got the works. song. And I'm like, then when we started this podcast, I'm like, you know what? That That's that's the Doc Talk Sports Podcast theme song. There you go. It's it's powerful. Yeah, I think it is. I, I think like it, it. Hey, if you have not yet um, subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. Just search Doc Talk Sports on YouTube. Hit the subscribe uh, button, and you'll be ready to go. Of course, this podcast will be on the YouTube channel. You also check out the Doc's Diagnosis, Behind the Point Spread. We put up some YouTube shorts. Shorts on there, so hit the subscribe button. Oh, and I think what uh, we got like almost 150, 200 subscribers last week alone. Yeah, it was it was a pretty good week last week that uh, Iowa diagnosis video did. <laughs> Dude, it I'm did almost wondering, well. do we need to do more? <laughs> okay, we get shredded in the YouTube and Twitter comments for for this, but do we need to do more Iowa stuff? I don't think it's more Iowa. Here's what I think it is, and and I can say this for the Colorado game. I can say it with the Michigan game. It's usually um, like those are our two most viewed podcasts on YouTube because Colorado fans ended up watching it. Michigan fans ended up watching it. I don't think it has to be Iowa. I think it needs to be maybe just other teams. If there's some other really cool play in college football, I think we could do that just because it attracts different fan bases. Well, but there you but go. let's be honest, that was the most talked about play all week long. I mean, I mean, Aaron Rodgers was, sounded off yeah. about it. I mean, a lot of people sounded off about it. Which I'll be curious to see what, because like this week, all of a sudden, I'm sitting here going, okay, well, now when you say that, I think, damn, should we have done the uh, uh, Shitter Sanders' brother, the, the targeting hit yeah. that he got ejected for? I know a lot of people are upset about the targeting hit. There's that wasn't co- even remotely targeting, but then you contrast it with the... The targeting call on the Purdue player against Nebraska, was it 21? Uh, I think so, yeah. It, it, either way, it was about as cut and dried textbook, lowering the head, lowering the shoulder to the opponent's head's level and striking with the crown of the helmet, and they reversed it. it, it, it and I'm looking at and I'm looking at Sanders, who comes across the middle. And in my opinion, did exactly what you were supposed to do. Because they, they talk about the whole rugby tackling thing yeah. now. He drops his body and basically does the equivalent of a flying cross body block, which is a rugby tackle. You, you basically, you just kind of hit the guy with the side of your body. And he does that. He lights up the dude from UCLA doing that. And all I could think of was like, oh, perfect example of not targeting. Not only do they call targeting, they uphold it on review and eject them. I, I'm wondering if it's I because just, it's like, so close to the head and neck area. You know, because it doesn't have to be crown of the helmet. If you if you even go for the head and neck area, it seems anymore. But that, in, the, in that one, it looked like Sanders dropped himself to hit the guy across the lower chest. Yeah. Like he was trying to do a cross body block across 
the UCLA players middle of his body. I mean, it was, it looked about as much of a, I'm going to do everything textbook by the rules to avoid head to head proximity. Did you see the blindside block in the Nebraska game yesterday? Yeah, that they called, that they did call the, and they called it a, a, a blindside. They didn't yes. call it targeting. They reviewed it for targeting, but said yeah. it's not targeting, but it, it was, was, and that was not targeting, but it was an illegal, uh, a blindside. It was a hell of a hit. It was a great hit. I, was, was, I freaking <laughs> loved it. <laughs> that that was what. That's one of those where in the old days they would put the you know the highlight oh tape together. God. You would see that I over had, and over again. I had a handful of those. I you know if somebody can go back and look. I don't know. I'm sure it's probably floating around YouTube somewhere. I had one of those in, in my brief stint as a starting offensive lineman for the Giants. It was very brief, by the way. Um, on a screen play, this would have been during the 96 season at Dallas. We ran a screen play, and then we had a guy whose job it was on the screens. Uh, you, you were the, the mop-up duty guy. Anybody trailing the play, you come around and just blindside the shit out of them. And I turn, I come, I, I come out in the screen pattern. I do my little loop back, look behind me. Here's Charles Haley. Guys, like more Super Bowl rings than anybody. Yeah, I mean, he's got like he's got like two hands worth, he right? Got, he's got like Tom Brady number of Super Bowl rings. They were just <laughs> with two different teams. Anyway, um, NFL Hall of Famer. I'm just like, oh, he's looking at the running back who just caught the pass. He has no idea I'm standing here. I'm lighting him up. Knocked him out of the game. Nice. Very, very nice. Just, I mean, it was as, in this day and age, it, it was as a, as an illegal a hit as you could have today. <laughs> you know, you were just, not, just nuked them. You were not in Lincoln yesterday for the Purdue game. You were actually in Wayne. How far is it between Wayne and Lincoln? About 120 miles, maybe? Probably. I mean, it's, I figure, uh, Oh, and do a quick Google yeah, we search were, on what the I mean, it's, it's, it's about an it's a little over an hour straight north. I mean, it, go to Skyler. Yeah, and, it, you, and you just keep going. You go through yeah, West Point. It's, you it's go about through. Four, it's about forty five yeah. minutes straight north of Skyler. But yeah, you you take Highway fifteen north. And you just stay on it till you hit right. Wayne. You just keep going. You're saying yeah. Lincoln to Wayne? Yeah, Lincoln to Wayne. Looks like it is a two hour drive. And um, 121 miles. Okay. Yeah, there you the, go. Right. The difference it. between Wayne and Lincoln yesterday was astronomical Huge. because because it, it was cold in Lincoln, but there was no snow. If you went and watched Wayne State College play Augustana University, how many inches of snow were up there yesterday? Uh, I thought they got three inches. Damn it! And they, and they got it basically between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Wow! Like it just. Dumped. Like we were driving up there and all of a sudden it was just like, oh, white out. This is great. <laughs> You're like, this is the way to watch football. Yeah. Now we knew this was going to hit. So everybody was bundled up, but you were oh prepared my God, for it? it was brutal. Weather. Yeah. But to August, it was like 28 degrees. Augustana lost for the first time yesterday. It was first loss of the season, 14 to 12. Um, it was one of those. Uh, statistical anomalies in that they held Wayne to minus 23 yards rushing, 43 yards passing. I, I got to double check. I think that's correct. Because I think the total was, I think Wayne finished the game with 20 yards of total offense. Held Wayne to zero first downs in the second half. And still lost? And lost. Because there's three inches of snow on the field. Well... Here's here's the lesson. Okay. Turnovers. Oh yeah. They had they had four turnovers, three picks, one fumble, one of the interceptions was pick six. So you what you're saying is about the only team who can win with a negative turnover ratio is Nebraska. Because that's really what it's starting to turn into. They're what Man. Which and and that's the thing that makes okay. Are we are we switching to the Nebraska? No, game? no, no. Which, because, okay, because because before you went to to to, to Wayne, people must have known. Uh, we got this email earlier in the week. Uh, Owen, what's the email say? 
Uh, dear Rob, Travis, and Owen, greetings from Wayne. Oh, Which, by uh, the way, this email is great. Yeah, by the way, Owen is now getting copied on the emails. I know. <laughs> Got, which, as well, he should. Yes. Yes. Keep going, sir. Okay. Greetings from Wayne, America. A good friend introduced me to the Husker Doc Talk podcast shortly after it was added to Apple Podcast, and I greatly appreciate everything you do with the show. Candid analysis, top-notch guests, good-natured banter, and lots of beer. You want me to keep going yeah, on the rest yeah, of the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With Augustana set to visit Wayne State for some gridiron action on Saturday, October 28th, I'd like to invite you to drink some beers after the game at Johnny Bird Brewing Co. My treat. I figure Dr. Rob will be in town. Owen might have a gig, and Travis will be glued to his six screens watching football <laughs> in the basement. <laughs> But the invitation stands for all of you and whoever might be traveling with you this weekend. I understand if you have other plans or obligations, but I would love to showcase our local brewery and extend some Wayne America hospitality. So I had to make an audible. We were going to drink some Idaho beer today. Uh, We're going to move that to next week because you came back with some Johnny Bird Brewing Company beer. Dude, so we did stop by. which and, And so it was Luke Virgil. Yeah. Who's from the, I think it's the Wayne Chamber of yeah, Commerce. Or the Economic Development Corporation of Wayne or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. So anyway, so Luke, Luke sent the email, um, which interestingly enough, my wife, who knows me well, had already looked up and found Johnny Bird's <laughs> Brewing. It was like, hey, when you guys are in Wayne, check this place out. <laughs> um, and so if, if you get a chance, so it's Johnny Bird Brewery, which it's, J O H N N I E Johnny B Y R D Bird. If you're watching on YouTube, all we got to do is just hold up the can. That's right. Um, anyway, great spot. It's kind of, they got kind of a cool little downtown. Like, I think everybody does the cool little downtown brick streets, all of that. See, now. I thought Wayne um, all had was chicken days. So uh, apparently there's something to do in Wayne now. Drink beer. Drink beer. And it's good beer. So, yeah, so we stopped by. I didn't have time to give Luke a call. I, Luke, I apologize for that. We were kind of the game had ended. I don't think my son was super fired up about hanging out with dad and just drinking beer in Wayne for the rest of the <laughs> afternoon. I, 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 I would have gladly done that, but anyway, and we had a couple of other things we had to get to later that afternoon. So I, I asked Rob, I go, you know, did, uh, did anybody know you? He goes, no, I'm wearing Augie gear. Nobody's going to know me. I'm like, yeah, you're 6'5", 285. <laughs> But their thing is like here's some here's some here's a couple of Yahoo Augie fans who drove down from South Dakota. So I'm drinking the uh, Summer Saul Kettle Sour. It's a four point uh, percent. They uh, they made this one on uh, ten twenty eight. Or is that one just when they uh, no? Because did they yeah, make the, it? That, that's no, that's when they, when they filled it. it. That's oh, when, wow. yeah, that was yesterday. Yeah. So it came out of the tap. I was right there watching. Oh, look at you. What else did you bring? You brought the triple IPA? So that's the Citra. Oh, yeah. All right, so it's their Citra IPA. Okay. Um, and then I got the Benedict Cucumber Batch Pilsner. So now when I was up there, I did try. They got a, they got their Mexican lager, the Algo. Uh, really solid. That's, again, it's kind of one of the, like I said, great garage fridge beer. Okay. Like if like Mexican lagers, they're like the perfect garage fridge beer. You mow your lawn, you just need a quick beer. You get a Mexican lager. You're in the garage replacing a headlamp on your car. Grab a quick beer out of the fridge. Mexican lager, perfect. See? There you go. So I tried that one. And then they do have, uh, they got a triple IPA, and it's 9%. 9%? 9% alcohol by volume. That's like uh, Loose Morals type stuff right there. I thought Loose Morals was like 11. Okay, it might have been, but uh, you, 9%. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. You and I don't remember we don't. that much. We don't. Um, it was, and that was good. So I I actually grabbed, uh, I grabbed a crowler of that and had that one last night while grilling out, so. Nice. Um, but yeah, any, these are good anyway, beer. I like good, nice looking cans. Good, good, uh, a nice dude, brand here, dude. Like the it. the swag up there is outstanding. Really? By the way, the hats and t shirts are kick ass. So, um, but if you get a chance, I mean, if you're in the area, dude, get up there. I mean, I'm one of those guys. If there's a small craft brewery in the area, check them out, support them because you're not going to find better beer. I mean, if you're in Wayne. Go what else you going to do? Yeah, go to Johnny Bird's. If you're in Norfolk, <laughs> go to Divots. If you're in Albion, go to Highway 14 Brewing. Go check these places out and drink their beer. It's good beer. Rob just And guess what? 
It's, odds are you've been there. It's well, odds are I probably have been. Um, but it's going to be, I mean, dude, you can have your bush light. You can have your Coors light anytime you want. And I'm not a snob. I like Coors light. I killed a few of those this weekend also. Yeah, but that's water to you. I've watched you drink Coors Light, and I've watched you drink like a 12-pack in like 35 minutes, and it did not affect you. I, I'm sure I've never no. seen anybody drink Coors Light like you have. I'm like, how does he do it? It is pretty much water. <laughs> Just, I've never. You just got to see Rob drink Coors Light some night, and it's it's just well. Maybe we'll just set a a, a twelve pack of Coors what Light were, here. Uh, what were we? Okay, the first Joe Mowgli a podcast, best yeah. podcast ever. By the way, go check all three out. Um, do you remember the first Joe Mowgli a podcast? Do you know what I think we were drinking? What's the? It, it's it, it's the. It's the Mexican beer that Costco sells. Oh. Dude, Owen, you've always got it here. I uh yeah, I, I know exactly I know what you're talking about. Is it's it like in a La bottle? La Estrella or something like that. Yeah. And and, I, and I'm pretty sure it, it originates from nowhere near Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I think wherever Costco has, like wherever, uh, what's the Costco store brand? Kirkland. Kirkland. Wherever Kirkland has a brewing and distilling facility, that's where this beer originates from. Anyway, so we had like, that's like Owen's summer beer. So you guys always have like three cases of it yeah. in your storeroom here in the basement. And so that that first night when... Uh, Mowgli was here. Yeah. Do you remember the table here at, at the end of the night? Yeah, and he wasn't drinking beer. He was drinking like vodka water because I don't think Joe drinks beer. Well, you and I were trying to keep up with his vodka waters. Yeah, because he had quite a bit of that too. There was a lot of dead soldiers on the table that <laughs> night. But anyway, that stuff is water, by the way. Yeah, and nobody can drink water better than you can. Hey, the, Scott's Drunk down at Husker Hounds has a new shirt that he wants everybody to know about. And it's brand new in the stores. And you can get it at huskerhounds.com. You can get it at uh, one of the two locations in the Omaha area. So I encourage you to go to the Superstore on 84th and Center. The new shirt that Scott Strunk has, and it's selling, I believe, for twenty-two bucks. Ugly wins count. Love it. Yeah, and and there's a lot of truth to that, you know. But I I, I need to preface this before we dive in because I agree with it one hundred percent. Ugly wins count. Just remember this season, Nebraska fans. You don't get to give anybody else shit about a bad schedule later on. <laughs> okay. You don't. You're talking about Iowa, like the Iowa comparisons. Yeah, I mean, because let's be honest, and I, there's no apology. You don't have to. I, and I'm being nice here. Oh. You never have to apologize for winning, even though your wins in the Big Ten are against teams that are combined 4-11. and 11. I don't have a problem yeah. with that. By the way, because you don't have to apologize for wins, you just don't get to give other people shit when it's when they when they're. The and I get that, but I do think Nebraska fans truly understand how bottom of the barrel we are right now. I don't think they're that bottom of the barrel. The West Division as a whole is bottom of the barrel. Yeah, and I mean, well, offensively they're pretty bad. Defensively they're not bad. They're really good. I will good. give you that. And you make the great point because I mean, you, you your response to a lot of people who were really bagging on Iowa was like, "Okay, between offense, defense and special teams, Iowa's best in the country, or they're 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 one of the best teams in the country over the last several years in defense and special teams. Yes, o- offense is the place where they've sucked ass. Absolutely, there's no, and and that's why they're not a very good. They're, that's why they're an average. Which, team. which actually, I I look at them and I'm and it, God, it's like like that fall from grace has happened actually only in really maybe three years. Yeah, I would Go agree. Three with that. years ago, Iowa was one of these teams. That's, they weren't. They weren't an offensive juggernaut. Ne- never but they have were, been. But they were going to go into a game and they were going to get two hundred yards rushing. Yeah, they were going to get a hundred and fifty yards passing. They were going to control the clock and beat well, you and, and just beat well, you into submission. How about this? Nebraska against Purdue gets the win. Actually, puts thirty some points on the board. Two hundred seventy seven yards of total offense. Five fumbles. Four of them lost. Harburg, six of 11, two touchdowns at 122 yards. 
Which which is interesting because if you hop down to the uh, the the Rob's grades and our itinerary here, um, I gave the passing game a B. Yeah, dude, I got raked over the coals for that on Twitter. But you know what? I mean, he's above fifty percent. Well, and that was my thought was like he's better than fifty percent. Two touchdowns, no interceptions. They he didn't throw. I mean, eleven passes. I mean, that is not a lot of throws. It's not. And he was relatively efficient. You had the fumbles, but I get it. It's you, you can hold that up there. But and that's say, not but, the passing game. That that's that's the running game. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, to me, he had the bomb. You know, he, had he what did. To, you know, yeah. and, and I'm and I made the point because a couple of people asked me about this on Twitter, and I do try to respond to most people if I get the chance. Yeah. If it's a relatively decent question, and I. You know, that question got asked, and my response was, is that, okay, let's say, let's say Harbor gets two more completions. Okay. He's eight of 11, two touchdowns, no interceptions, and people are raking me over the coals for not giving him an A. And you're grading on what he's done so far this year. You're not, you're not trying to compare him to, to you know, oh, Caleb no. Williams or something oh, like that. No, and I'm not. Tr- I mean, I'm not trying to compare him to great quarterbacks of Nebraska past. And here is the other thing too: when you look at these grades, they're definitely on a scale. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you really got to look. I'm sort of the the explanation, Steve Peterson here. When we're evaluating Nebraska, we gotta we gotta take into consideration where. We're at right now, where <laughs> I was at right now, where Minnesota's at, where all of these teams are at right now. I mean, and, and that's true. I, I mean, that that was a from a passing game standpoint for this Nebraska team against th- that Big Ten West opponent. Yeah, that was a B. I, I, now, I didn't have a problem. Some now, people thought you were spot on. Other people yeah, like now, to argue that with you. Have, I mean, would that grade fly back in 1997? No, but this or, isn't 97. Even, how about when you had like Joe Gans? No. Or Zach Taylor? No. Or Sam Keller? Was it, let's go really back, right? <laughs> Don't take the bait. Don't take the bait. Yeah, Just the let Sam it go. Keller, I'm not, that, that one I'm not taking the bait. Um but I mean, when you look at guys that were like, okay, yeah, that guy was actually pretty damn solid. I, it's you can't make that comparison. I'm doing it for Nebraska right now. That yeah, that was a good solid B for for a passing game grade. That was a B, and and I thought it you know it got the job done. You got two passing touchdowns in a game. Um, I mean, ultimately the go ahead score was. However, you want to add it up was either the the blocked field goal they got ran back or Emmett Johnson's touchdown run. Well, the, you hit two things there because you also gave um, special teams a, a B, and a little people, some people are upset because of of the block. And, but there's more to special teams than just that. You have return game. There's a whole bunch of things that go See, into the. And, and it's one of those teams. things. I when I'm watch, watching special teams. By the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop open the cucumber pilsner here. Okay. From Johnny Bird's Brewing. Yeah. Um, like some of the stats I'm looking at are return yardage. Yeah. Like how did Nebraska do in terms of return yardage? How did they do in terms of limiting the opponent's return yardage? How did the punter do? I mean, did you average 45 yards a punt? Yeah. Well, guess what? That's pretty freaking solid. That's a solid day punting. I mean, I'm looking at those things as well. So, I mean, I get it. I mean, the two big things were the. I mean, you had a couple of fumbles on kick returns, and that's or part kick of special return, teams. Kick return, punt return. But see, see people only so see the, the shiny his, objects and they go, well, "Yeah, they had a block." What are you talking about? Yeah. So I mean, it's one of those. Um, I mean, do I drop them to a C plus or a C minus because of those those two fumbles? On the flip side, if I do that, somebody's going to get after me and say, like, okay, dude, Alvano kind of found his swagger again and had the second longest field goal in in, in Memorial Stadium history. Okay, that's really good. 
defensively special teams had a blocked field goal that they returned for a touchdown. That's a 10-point swing right there, by the way. I mean, if you want to think about how big a difference that one play was, 10 points. You're going from plus three to plus three for Purdue to plus seven for Nebraska. Huge play. Yeah. Those, those are game changers. So you have a 10 point swing on one play. Okay, yeah, guess what? That pro that play alone probably that and Alvano. So there's a, there's 13 points in Nebraska's favor. You took three from Purdue. You, you, you got 10 for Nebraska. Those two plays, Alvano's field goal and the, and the block in return. Okay, is that enough to pull you from a C to a B? I mean, if, if, I'm, your, if I'm your calculus teacher, I say yes. I'm giving you that grade. Okay. But some people thought it should have been, you know, an A. Some people thought it should have been a C. Because I think those people are the ones who are watching the whole, the magnitude uh, of special teams, right? I mean, there's so much the more CP, I th- I than think big the, plays. I think the B, well, yeah. I think the B people are the ones who are sitting there going, okay, they had a couple of huge plays that benefited them. They had a couple of plays that hurt them. The, be- the plays that benefited them ultimately benefited them more than the bad plays True. hurt them. So you have two... Two big plays that that like mathematically added up to plus thirteen points for Nebraska. Okay, I mean you look at the final score it was thirty one fourteen. That's an eighteen to fourteen win without those two True. plays. It's a lot closer. Yeah that 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 turns this into a holy shit. Thank God we pulled that one out yeah. too. People just looking at the score after the game, having no idea what happened, going like, eh, Nebraska kind of nuked Purdue. Because I think that's perception. Because most people just scroll through the scores, go 31-14, easy win for Nebraska. They yeah. win three in a row. Purdue, Purdue sucks ass. Nebraska yeah. rolled them. So. Um, what, I, I was surprised maybe a that little was, bit. The, that was enough in my mind. It's a B. So the running game, you gave a C minus, and I, and I get it, I, I do. The, the Huskers ran for what 155 yards. Uh, they had 43 yards lost, but uh, that goes on some sacks. So they actually gained about 198. Ended up with a net of 155. Um, you which gave I a- which I probably could. I mean, if there's a passing game grade adjustment that I could make, I probably would have. I could have knocked him down on the sacks because I I have historically said. Oh, offensive line blocking during the game, yeah. whether it's a run play or a passing play, does factor into my grade. Yeah, because those. you gave the O line a C minus, and you gave the running game a C minus. But I and I, I kind of on the passing game, I was kind of honing in more on this week a little bit more on Harburg, a little less on the O line, and then I kind of teed off on the O line on the run game and the and well and the O line grade itself. Um, Emmett Johnson though, he he had the touchdown run. I think it was the last was that the last touchdown scored. In yeah, the place? he had thirteen uh, carries, seventy six yards. That one, t- I I. I Nice looking run. It, it was. And probably the biggest play of the game, in my opinion. Um, one of Purdue's linebackers, oh, it's number four. The guy's like a 250 pound linebacker. The guy's a freaking stud. Had a huge hit on Harburg earlier in the game. Emmett Johnson takes a pitch, comes running down the sideline. It was a run to the right. Kydrin Jenkins, he had Thank seven you. solo tackles, uh, one assist, uh, eight total. Eight, and he's a really, really good linebacker. Guy's got some. He, the guy has some NFL potential. Big, fast, knows how to read offenses. He came up to put a hit on Emmett Johnson along the sideline. And it was funny watching it because Johnson, Johnson drops his shoulder – and launches is, is it Caden? Kydron. Kydron. Yeah. He launches Kydron. Dude lands on his butt, like four yards away. And the announcers are like, oh God, number four with the huge hit on Emmett Johnson. I'm like, Emmett Johnson sent that guy flying. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell are you looking at? 
<laughs> and then it was funny because th- like they watched the replay and both announcers were like, well, they, they, yeah, they, they, they kind of like, they, they, they sort of hit each other hard. It was, it was a, it was a big hit by both guys, dude. Emmett Johnson sent that guy flying. It was awesome. He's he's. I'm excited to see what he does going forward because I think we maybe found a guy that can get out there and kind of be kind of shoulder the load here and t- take that pressure off Harburg. I think, but but I think what a lot of people are concerned about Rob because it's not changing. And Matt Rule talked about it last week during his news conference. At the time, they were what. Uh, negative eight on the turnover margin and they're still winning football games. It makes no statistical sense in the world because when you if you lose the turnover battle, you usually lose the football game, right? I you, mean you do there's but they fumbled the ball five times yesterday, lost four of them. Yeah. What's the problem here? What I mean, is this a mental thing? Is it a fundamental thing in the way they hold on to the football? Okay, so I mean here's the thing. And we've talked about this before. What plagued the Mike Riley teams? It was turnovers, special teams, miscues, penalties. What plagued the Scott Frost teams? Penalties, special teams, miscues, turnovers. If that's your, I mean, I hate to say it, that's the culture of Nebraska football over the last 10 years, is is penalties and turnovers. And special teams miscues. That's your culture. You don't change that in one year. Yeah, but I got to be honest with you. I'm a little surprised. Why can't you? That doesn't make sense to me. Tell me why you can't change that. To me, holding on to the football is a fundamental thing. Because when you're not a great team, there's a hundred different things you're trying to do to get better. It's not just holding on to the football. It's learning a new coaching staff. It's learning things from a technique standpoint. Um, It's learning things from sort of a mental, emotional standpoint. When you get in a game that's a tough game that you need to figure out how to hold on and win the game at the end of the game, I just said game nine times there. (laughs) Um, like like in that Purdue game where Purdue they sc- they had a couple of quick scores there in the second half. Well, one was because of a fumble. Jeff Sims yeah. fumbles the damn thing, and, and the guy they takes, were, takes yeah. it for a touchdown. I mean, and they return it. So it's all of a sudden you had this game where you're sitting there going, "God, we're up twenty four nothing. This is gr- oh shit, it's twenty four fourteen. That's the kind of game that under Riley or Scott Frost, Nebraska, you well. Know, I was going to say under Riley's last year and pretty much all of Scott Frost's years. Um, that's the kind of game Nebraska would kind of just sort of go into this emotional hole over and would lose. And instead, they kind of buckled down. The defense tightened up. The offense got a little bit better and punched in another touchdown to make it 31-14. And all of a sudden, the game's over, and you're sitting there going, okay, hey, you found a way to win. Great. And they're doing a good job of that. I just, I don't think you're going to fix some of these problems in one year. Now, here's the other thing when it comes to turnovers. Really, 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 really talented football players. Guess what they don't do? Tell me. Turn the ball over. True. They just don't. They're good at not turning the ball over. Really good football players are good at all things football related, including not turning the ball over. If you look at Nebraska's football team right now, is that a great bunch of football players? Uh, great. Not, the answer to that's no. No. I mean, this is, this is an okay group of football players. At who, best. Who, who is in the driver's seat to win the West Division. Well, they kind of are. But so is Minnesota. So is Iowa. So is Wisconsin. Well, yeah, you're right. But Minnesota's, I mean, I mean we can go through that a little bit later yeah, on. I mean, Minnesota's got to. Yeah. I think I it guess, comes down to Iowa and Nebraska, but that's me. I, I do, too. And I think Nebraska, it's all of a sudden where I was like, okay, taking the under. All of a sudden, I'm looking at you picking the over and, okay, you might have called it. Thank you. Thank you. But this was the game that I was, was before the season started. I by the get way. it, but I was worried about this game because I mean, when we talked to Scott Spritzer, 
going in the Northwestern game. Yeah. That was the game Scott was like, yeah, Nebraska is going to win this by two scores. No big deal. Don't worry about it. The Purdue game was the one where Scott was like, uh, this was like a three and a half Pretty point sucks. spread. And then Nebraska loses three offensive linemen, and Scott's like, yeah, now it's a two and a half. And How about Northwestern going to get a win yesterday against uh, Maryland? I mean, that, yeah. that shocked me. I mean, they, they actually looked good yesterday. They're they're get, Well, what you're seeing from some of these teams, and I think Nebraska is one of them, as the season goes along, they're getting better. They're learning. Now, I mean, if you throw in Ohio State at Nebraska or Northwestern, I mean, it's – you're going to lose that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but it's, yeah, Nebraska has the luxury of the fact we already played the best team on our schedule. And that was Michigan. Um, I want to go back to the fumbles and in particular, Jeff Sims, who got in the football game. He's on fourth and one runs from the shotgun. Again, that's what it was called. He fumbles. It goes for a touchdown. My question is this, does Jeff Sims play again the rest of the year at quarterback if Harburg does not get hurt God I don't think so yeah I'm kind of with you I don't know how you can and he's a great kid who's like talk about buy-in and and has handled everything hundred per- yes talk about yeah like talk about a professional the guy is like total buy-in to Husker to to, to Nebraska yeah and it's I I feel bad but I mean God, Spritzer pointed this out. He said he when he came out of Georgia Tech, he was already a known entity to Vegas in the sense of this guy, you can guarantee he will account for, what is it, two turnovers yeah. per game. Now, they're usually in the first half. He does a lot yeah. better in the second half. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it, it's brutal statistics. But yeah, I will be shocked if he if they play him again. Bar again, like you said, barring an injury to Harburg, yeah, which could happen. I mean, you've got to. I mean, Harburg's still one of the not the best, but one of the better running threats on the team. He's still going to get a lot of carries. He's still going to pick up a lot of hits as the season goes along. Hey, don't forget that Fred is your guy when you want to bet more, more bonuses, more bets. And right now, uh, if you download the BetFred Sports app, depends on where you're at. Got to make sure the BetFred is legal where you're at. Um, Get $105 on Fred just for signing up and placing your very first bet. You go to the promo section, insert the promo code BETFRED, and with your very first bet, your minimum has to be $10. Uh, but you're going to get $105 on Fred just for placing your very first bet with uh, Bet Fred. So uh, go to the Apple and Google Play stores to download the app. Sign up today. Uh, place your first bet. Get $105 on Fred. Use the promo code Bet Fred. Don't forget terms and conditions do apply. You got to be 21 plus located in the state where Bet Fred does business. And if you have a gambling problem, call 1 800 Bets Off. Connor Orr, man, he was supposed to be in here last week talking to us about NIL, but he had like uh, dog training and family photos. So we, we, <laughs> family, we, we've, pun- we've punted him till the end of the season. Uh, but Connor is a uh, friend of the podcast, a licensed sports agent in the state of Nebraska, and he works directly with athletes and businesses to help them navigate the ever changing landscape of name, image, and likeness. Connor is also focused on corporate and personal injury litigations in both Nebraska and Iowa. He can work with you on your business planning, estate planning, and real estate transactions. Call Connor or today at 402-408-6488. I mentioned Husker Hounds. He's got the $22 uh, new Ugly Wins Count t-shirts for $22. Uh, You can get a a 50-year Heisman Trophy commemorative autographed Johnny Rogers uh, football on sale for $125. Infant toddler and kid hoodies for twenty five bucks and cornheads. Cornheads now selling for nineteen ninety nine. Two locations in the Omaha area: the Superstore at eighty fourth and Center, and out west at one hundred and seventy first in Lakeside Hills Plaza. And check out Centris Federal Credit Union. They're a proud sponsor of the Doc's Diagnosis, which you can check out on our YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed to yet. We we actually do a couple plays. We talk about the fourth and one with Jeff Sims that went for uh, a, a touchdown and Luke Gifford's big. Hit following uh, and kind of Rob really goes into the three three five defense and kind of what to look for and how it disguises things and really becomes 
uh, really, really effective. So uh, Citrus Federal Credit Union, federally insured, by, federally insured by NCUA, equal housing lender. And uh, yeah, so Rob, up next is going to be Michigan State. Uh, Spartans got beat at Minnesota yesterday, 27-12. to 12. They gave up 200 yards rushing. But Nebraska goes on the road. Michigan State's bad, but they're not. They're not. Well, yeah, they're bad. They're, they're, they're bad. They're, they're Big Ten West bad. Yeah, they are. No, they may be worse than that because they're zero and five. They haven't beat a Big Ten West end team yet. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, this one's going to be interesting to me. I I kind of worry about every game going forward here now because I mean we talked about. I mean already talked about why I worried about Purdue. Yeah. Uh, Michigan State's one of these teams, and I, I I didn't really think about it. You and I, I, I mean, you even phrased it, last chance win for the Spartans. Yes. I, I mean, to me, because look at what they got left. They, they've got Nebraska at Ohio State at Indiana. Indiana actually played pretty well yesterday. Yeah, that, that one surprised yeah. me. Yeah, and then they have Penn State. So I, I don't think Michigan State's going to go on the road and get a win. They're at home against Nebraska. Is it their last chance to get a win for the rest of the season? I think it is. And this is a team that has, I mean, historically has played. I mean, I say this, I mean, more under D'Antonio than anybody, but played well-coached control football. They didn't turn it over much. They played solid defense, good special teams, efficient on offense. Um I, it, it's I, if if they can do that, I just I don't know if you're a Michigan State football player. What are you What are you playing? It's for It's a right shit up? show. They're playing to get the hell out of there. Yeah, because it and that's that's about the only thing. If you're a Michigan State football player right now, you're playing for like transfer portal points. It's style points. What can I? Can you showcase yourself for the next team? You just you just got a feeling it's going to be a mass exodus. I thought when D'Antonio came on, I know he's not he's not the head coach, but he's a, an advisor. I thought he would have brought some structure and some discipline there. But I think once the losing started, it's just like it's hard. It's to hard start. to just yeah yeah. It's hard to rein that mentality in. And here's the thing: I mean, you can bring D'Antonio back as that in that advisor type position. But the problem is, is that all of those players know. There's probably nobody there currently who's going to be there next year. True. I mean, none of those guys are going to be there. Yeah. Coaches are trying to say, because you you probably have coaches trying, okay, how am I going to get out of here? Yeah. Who, who's going to be moving? I need to find myself another job. Hell, I'll go down to Division two, one AA if I have to just to get yeah. out of there. I mean, I, if I'm the coach, I'm, I'm kind of miffed about the fact that they're still under contract and haven't been released yeah. yet. But – being under contract's not a bad thing because you may get a whole well, year's pay too. Well, no, and that's true, and I get that aspect of it. But I mean, if I'm one of those Michigan State assistants, you're you're looking to move on as well. So I, I would just say that if Nebraska doesn't turn the ball over four or five times like it did against Purdue, they go to East Lansing and win because yeah. I, there's not going to be anybody there. You got and team. Nebraska's. I mean, historically, has played fairly well there. Yeah, they have. So now. Again, you have to take advantage of the week schedule. There's yeah. you don't, and I'm not saying you don't apologize apologize for ugly wins. Don't apologize for playing a week schedule. If Just go win. This, if you're this Nebraska team, yeah, God, you take what you can get. Exactly, it, it's sitting there so, on a platter, right yeah. there. Yeah, and it, and it's you know, I mean, this is something that's been talked about a ton. Is just. <sighs> I, I mean, you and I talked about it earlier in the show. It's not like Nebraska fans haven't bagged on Iowa, Iowa. on occasion for, yeah. for the same kind of thing. Right now, I think Nebraska fans, especially after the last two seasons under Frost, they truly understand, God, just the position they're in. Anything is good. Any win is good. Any chance to go to a bowl game is good. They will take any bowl game they can get. And I think right now, you know, they're so starved for just, I'm going to call it forward movement within the program. I mean, if they can get to the point where they can get six wins, go to a bowl game, get that extra. They're going to get to seven, Rob. 
They're going to win this weekend. Damn, look at you, Husker fan. <laughs> See? <laughs> Freaking the, hates the Hawkeyes. I think they get to seven or eight. I'm not I'm – not, I, I can't decide if they – I think they I, may be the one, beat Iowa. The one thing that got ingrained in me watching – the Scott Frost teams, man, you you don't you don't count your chickens, man. Well, you just don't. I get it. Okay, you so, just don't. So you have four teams now in the West Division that are three and two. It's an it's an ugly division. Uh, Minnesota technically, I guess, would be on top of that right now because they have the tiebreak over Iowa, and they also have the tiebreak over Nebraska. Minnesota has Illinois at Purdue at Ohio State, and then Wisconsin at home. So you've got one loss. And kind of a, I guess I kind of look at the Wisconsin game as a toss up. Wisconsin, you know, and Wisconsin played pretty good yesterday against tra- Ohio State. They traded punches as hard yeah. as they could with Ohio State for about two and a half quarters there. So Iowa is at Northwestern. That game's going to be at Wrigley Field. All, be more- of, all of a sudden, that's like a toss up. Yeah, but there's going to be more Iowa fans at Wrigley Field than there will be Northwestern fans. Um, Damn. There will be. That's what's nuts because, okay, well, and that's Northwestern. Yeah. There would, the been, hometown there would have been team. There would have been more. It's no different when Nebraska goes to Northwestern. There's more Husker fans at, at Ryan Field than there are at Northwestern. No, fans. I know. I just I'm sitting here going like it's Wrigley, it's Chicago. Like you, you have a university and a football team who bills themselves. Like, do you know, do you know li- what Chicago people like when it comes to college they football? They literally market themselves as Chicago's college football yeah, team, but they're not. You know who Chicago's college football team is? Notre Dame. Yeah. They all go to Notre Dame. Yeah. There's a Notre Dame like gift shop down on the Miracle Mile or the Magical Mile, whatever they call it. <laughs> uh, Iowa at Northwestern, Rutgers at home, Illinois at home, and, and at Nebraska. Here's the problem with Iowa is after that Minnesota game, a couple of bad breaks and like their ability to, I mean, it's like Nebraska though. Couple of bad breaks and your ability to pull out a win gets get one hundred percent gets real sketchy. And I mean, Nebraska overcoming the turnovers against um, Purdue is one thing, but doing that on a week in and week out basis that gets really tough to do. And you saw what happened with Iowa last week against Minnesota. Everybody's susceptible. Iowa, when when you don't have the capability to score points offensively. At, at some point, some of those special teams' miscues can get you. And, and here's the deal. Nebraska has a better ability to score points offensively than, Nebraska, than Iowa does right now. Yes. They're, oh, 100%. They're 100%. Um, and the D, you could probably say the defensive capabilities between those two teams, I think, is a loss. I, I would probably agree with you. Um, I think uh, Iowa's special teams are better, especially the return game. Yes, I will give yes. you that. Yeah, so I mean, that, again, that could be an Iowa Northwestern. Although up Cooper's going to get called for uh, legal I, signaling or Iowa whatever Northwestern you call opened up at twenty nine and a half for a point total. It's like the lowest college football point total in the history of the game. <laughs> that's unfucking. That's believable. amazing. That is just bad football right there. Yeah. Um, Wisconsin at Indiana, Northwestern at home, Nebraska at home, and then finishing it up at Minnesota. That's that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good schedule. Yeah, that's that's probably when you look at this. I think, but I, I look at the route that Wisconsin has and that Nebraska has, and Nebraska going to be at Michigan State, <sighs> Maryland at home, at Wisconsin, and Iowa at home. I mean, yeah. To me, I, Minnesota doesn't win this because Minnesota is not going to win at they, Ohio they, State. They're they're the one team when you look at all of these that has the automatic loss. Watch us say that yes. Minnesota beats Ohio they're not, State. They're not winning at the horseshoe. Um, the uh, I, I look at Wisconsin and Nebraska. I think have the best route. I really do. Um, Iowa isn't bad, but it needs to it needs to play. It needs to show me something against Northwestern. Yeah, but I would I, agree I, with you on the, that. The problem is, is that when you look at Iowa, like, like I look at. Was like we're we're looking at the teams these guys have to play. So we're looking at who Iowa has to play, Wisconsin has to play, Nebraska has to play. Iowa is the team that I look at and I go like, okay, defense plays great, special teams play great. 
Iowa's the team that can shoot itself in the foot more than now, m- more than Wisconsin and Nebraska, I think. Iowa had a bye game. week this week. I don't know what you can do differently to change up an offense. I don't think you anything, can't. You can't. You're not going to see them change much. You're going to see the same product this weekend against Northwestern that you've seen the whole year. I just I, I look at Wisconsin and I'm like, okay, well, who are they playing? I look at Nebraska and I'm like, okay, who are they playing? I look at Iowa and I'm like, can they overcome themselves? And the answer to that, maybe, maybe most of the time, yeah. yes, actually, but the the few times they don't, that's where that's where they're going to get stuck. Put but, a percentage on what you think Nebraska is playing in the Big Ten championship game: thirty percent, forty percent, fifty percent. Legit, I say twenty to thirty. Okay. And the reason is is because I see a loss. Between Iowa and Wisconsin, I see a loss. And here's the thing. Maryland did some damage earlier in the year. Yeah, I don't know what's happened there. They've looked way sketchy the last couple of two, three weeks. But I still look at them and go, okay, like uh, it's not like they've lost a bunch of guys to injury. They've still got some capabilities. I look at Wisconsin, and the thing that makes me look at Wisconsin and go, okay, I think they still have a really good path to it. The question mark there is the fact that, you know, Nebraska is going to be fired up to play them. Wisconsin's at Minnesota. That's a rivalry game. It is. Is that Paul Bunyan's axe? Sure. I think it is. All I, mean, I, know, all I know is that there, there's those organic rivalries that have existed since like but 1907 I, in the Big Ten, and this is one of them. I, I'll say this. I hope that the last game of the year on Black Friday comes down to Nebraska and Iowa for the Big Ten West because that only adds to the rivalry that is – it's, yeah. it's it, it, I think it, it, it oh, adds to it. I would freaking love – and somebody, somebody asked me about this earlier. They were like, do you want to actually see Nebraska – if the choice is win six or seven games and go to a bowl game versus – Stop it. Win seven or eight and go to the Big Ten championship That's, that's game. a dumb question. It's a dumb fucking question. And in, well, here's the thing: I had a dumb answer initially because I was like, I don't know if I want to go to the Big Ten title game. Yes, get, you do. Get my ass kicked again. But then it's one of those. I've seen a few other people weigh in on it, and like now my mind is completely switched over to like, yeah, you you want to win as much as you can win, yeah. even if it means. But you, and you're adding an, an additional game onto the schedule. Which even if you get your ass kicked in that game, you, it's an additional game. It's an additional opportunity for growth. It's for beyond a team. that. It's like, hey, yeah, we weren't very good. We got to the championship game. Things are changing. Yeah, come be a part of this. Yeah, hey, listen, I had to put up with this with Iowa fans back when uh, the twelve and zero regular season. Where they were like, oh, oh, back in 2015 when they went undefeated. No, they did not go undefeated. They went 12 and two. But there were actually people going, well, I I hope they lose the Big Ten title game so we can go to the Rose Bowl. I'm like, but that's like that's like that weird Big Ten. I don't give dynamic. a shit. You go to the college football. If you can go to the college football playoff, you go to the college football playoff. Yeah. I don't care if you get smoke showed by somebody. Yeah. If you can play for a championship, you go play for a championship. Don't just assume you're going to get boat road, but you might. Right? Yeah. I mean, you might get a win too. Who knows? I'm trying to figure you you like dropped Boat Road. Is that or- and Smoke Showed? <laughs> I'm just making shit up, You're man. Like a rapper now. Uh, it, it's, it's because we're, reco- <laughs> we're we're recording way too late on a Sunday. We usually don't go this and late. And there's beer, and it's your fault. Um, Sorry, Georgia now has won 25 in a row. That's that's pretty good. That's that's they're pretty good. They so here's my thing. I was gonna get. I was looking at this because we you you always put together kind of an itinerary. You mean, yes, people, we do come in here somewhat organized. A little, little bit of organization here. Um, and part of me was like, yeah, but I mean, oh my God, they've, they've got to be the least impressive this year, two-time maybe. Two-time defending okay. national champs. I mean, it, it's not like they just destroyed everybody they've played the last two and a half years. They True. really haven't. Like ninety five methodical. Like ninety five Nebraska nuked freaking everybody. T- 
2001 Miami nuked everybody. I mean, they had a couple games that were a little close. Um, 2013 Florida State, they they nuked everybody. I mean, these really, really good teams, you look at like, like – of the 12, 13, 14 games they play, 10 or 11 of them are just utter complete blowouts. Uh, Joe Burrow LSU team, was that 2019? Uh, God, I'm trying to think. I think it was 2019. Yeah, this is third year in the league. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, they nuked everybody. Nobody was close. That's not Georgia. No, nobody's looking. But you know what they do? They just win. They just keep doing it. That's pretty freaking impressive. I, I, I've got a lot of respect for the fact that they've done what they've done that consistently. I, I tell you what, I couldn't be happier for anybody just because I know him. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lance Leipold got a win over Oklahoma yesterday. That was a big deal. Um, there was a couple questionable calls in that in that game, but and I didn't watch it. We were. Uh, Hell, it was weather delayed for like an hour. They had to yeah. like stop the game, and it was uh, um, dude D two football. They don't stop it for the weather <laughs> just because there's three to four <laughs> inches of snow on the ground. I think there was lightning in the area down there, but uh, uh, big win for KU is now what six and two. Um, that Big Twelve conference is interesting because you got uh, I think there's like four teams at four and one. It, it's yeah. crazy, and Iowa State's one of those too, which is which is nuts considering the season they've started. But I, that was big. They they tore down the goalpost, uh, but there was a there was a Kellen Houston moment in the in the in the oh, KU the, game. Yeah, there's a, the the little Twitter video or TikTok video there where the fans are stupid. The, the drunk KU fans going yeah. up. He's got the L sign. He's yeah. holding up to the calling calling a guy a loser. And yeah. you're you're right. I mean, which kudos to the Oklahoma player for just ignoring the yeah. guy. Yeah. But I mean that's the kind of thing where I I hate fans on the field after the game. But it's cool in some cases too, though, right? I mean, no, fuck that shit. Come on, man. A, a, no. a good a good field storm no. is fun. No, screw that, dude. I didn't trust when I was at Nebraska. I didn't trust our own fans when they stormed the field, and that did happen on occasion when I was there. It's hard to get on the field at Lincoln. A lot harder than yeah. some other stadiums. Yeah, I just because if you come down off the west or the south or north, you, you got to make a pretty good jump. Yeah, which you, you dropped Kellen Houston's name there. I mean, the, kind of the reference there is, and I, I actually tweeted about this and not like I hashtagged it. Kellen Houston was right. <laughs> so he was a Nebraska football player. I couldn't even give you the year. It was like the well, little, hold on. So I'm trying to think. It, it, it was Frank Solich was still the head coach. Was it Solich still? It, yeah, because we were down. So that would have been. It, it was no. Gary Pinkle's like first win over because Pete McIntyre, Petey Mac shot the video. I was the one sitting right there. I pulled Keith Mann aside. I said, Keith, I've got this video. And Keith oh, was like, geez. And he's like, we were the only ones that had it. I went on Greta Van Susteren on Fox News and talked about it. I mean, it was national. So that was so my, you're the guy that threw Kellen Houston under the well, bus? Well, because I go to Keith after the game. I'm like, Keith, I've got this video, man. I'm going to have to use it. And he asked me not to. And being a dickhead that I was, I didn't do it. Yeah, because you freaking hate Nebraska. No, I I, I could have used it that night, and it could have been even worse, right? I mean, but I held off. Um, but I ended up going. We had the best video. People knew about it because Kellen laid a guy out, and I well, get it. Fan, he felt he, it was after the game. The fans stormed the yes. field. The Nebraska players are trying to do everything they can to, to get, get off. out of there. And this guy runs right up to Kellen Houston. And I don't even, th- I think the guy was blind drunk. Oh, yeah. I don't think he had any idea that there was even a person in no. front of him. But he ran up and he he had his hand brought up like he was going to do something. Well, but, it, but it's probably more of a celebration than anything. Oh, and I totally get it. But as a player, you're like, oh my God, is this guy attacking me? And Houston just, reflexively throws a quick cross and just lights the dude up and just i mean it was it was beautiful i think that might have been that might have been like the guy just went down in an instant i mean just knocked him completely out he was out i think you can still find it on youtube if you just uh google kellen houston he was yeah talk about concussed but I mean, it, it, that's one of those things where I saw that, and at the time I was like, 
Yeah. Don't storm the field, asshole. Yeah, but I, I did Greta Van Susteren show on Fox News. You're a big deal. Dude. I, I, I used to be. I used to be. Now I just Media. hang out in the basement, right? That's what. Now I'm trying to. Now I'm like, should I? Uh... <laughs> hey, we had uh, some good questions and comments coming in uh, throughout the week. Uh, let's go back to the newsroom. That's where <laughs> that's where Owen is. Uh, what do we got for Doctor Rob Owen? Okay, uh, looks like uh, this first question uh, comes from. Active duty Husker in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, how do you grade? He tweets a lot. He he's, does. Right. Yep. He's he's consistent. Love it. How do you grade the individual performances of the new starters today along the offensive line? Repeat that again. I want to make sure I get this one. Because you were right. on your phone. Well, and by the way, <laughs> Kellen Houston's video is out there on YouTube. <laughs> Thanks, Trav, for putting the question. it there. <laughs> question again. Yep. How do you grade the individual performances of the new starters today along the offensive line? You're thinking about this? It's the question's for you. No, I know. I guess, I mean, I'm trying to be nice here. Uh, you Just be honest. Yeah, I, I thought we taught, it, it's kind of a C across the board. Okay. That's which is fair. what I was get, which, but I think the guys they replaced would have been a C as well too. I thought I thought Teddy looked pretty solid. I was I was kind of worried about him in terms of how he was going to look coming off of the injuries and playing a full game start to finish. Um, I'm excited to see because he's he's in my opinion the least known commodity there. He's the guy that I that I hope can kind of hold it together. Um, Lutovsky at right guard, I, I thought he did reasonably decent. Was it a great game by him? No. But I don't know if we've seen great performances from Lutovsky. And he's played a lot over the, the course of this season. So we, we've got a lot of it. I didn't see anything new from him that really impressed me, but I thought he, he didn't screw up horribly either. It's just I, I thought he could have been better. Um. Oh, the left guard. I just blanked. I want to say it's Evans Jenkins. Yeah, is that right? Yep. Um, I thought he did reasonably solid. I mean, the plays that jump out at me, uh, the the fourth and one where Sims fumbled. I, I thought the right side of the line. I thought Lutowski did fine on that one. I, I I thought the guys on the left did just fine on that one. I mean, Brett, they Ben's, gave up three sacks. Yeah, Ben Scott kind of got nuked on that one. Giving up the sacks was painful to see, but it, it, it's also one of those things. Did you see Corcoran and Ben Hart give up sacks when before Corcoran got hurt? Uh, Ethan Piper's given up sacks. Uh, Newelli's given up sacks. I mean the. I didn't see – okay, you want to know the best way to to describe this? Sure. Scott Spritzer was right. So we brought up this on the show last Wednesday. Behind where, the point spread, you can watch live on YouTube. Exactly. Where we talked about like, hey, you just lost 60% of your offensive line in one game. How's that going to affect the point spread? Spritzer's like, eh, maybe half a point. Dropped him from like a three-point spread yeah. to a two-and-a-half point spread. It's like it, it it barely registered. And, and we asked Scott, we're like, okay, well, how does losing three-fifths of your offensive line in one game not affect things that much? And Scott said, he goes, listen, those starters weren't that good to begin with. Basically, you just lost three backups in terms of quality and just replaced them with three more backups. It's a good way to look at it. That's, I mean, it's a brutal assessment. But, I mean, basically you, you, you replaced what, for the better part of the season, has been a C grade. And I get it. That's a passing grade. Take it as that. It is a passing grade. But you replaced a C, you replaced C performances with C performances. So there you go. Answer to your question. Next question, Owen. Next question comes from Darren, and this one, uh, the subject line, this is an email, the subject line is Riola. He's had them since last year, and I get injuries, but do you... Uh, you rolled your eyes. A little bit. 
Sorry. Yeah. No, I get going. injuries, but do you... See, oh, I guess he's trying to say, do you see significant development? Compared to the whole team, O-line seems the same. Darren. God, it's hard to tell. And, and the reason is because I don't think he's had much to work with. I really don't. I mean, I, I look at that defensive line. There's some pretty damn good athletes on yeah. that defensive line. There are. You look at linebackers. They've got some guys who can play the sport. You look at defensive back, rover position, the the Jack guy, the the, the Luke Gifford guy. Uh, they've got some dudes. You look at tight end. There's some really good athletes there. You look at wide receiver. I mean, Travis, you and I were trading messages on Jalen Lloyd and the kind of athleticism and speed he brings to the table. Uh there's some you got some guys you can work with there. Uh you look at running back. God, we've already lost what two or three running backs this year. And, and I mean, you're sitting there going, like, oh my God, how thin is this position? And now at this point, we're looking at it, it's like, man, Emma Johnson looked pretty good. Maybe that running back room was a hell of a lot deeper than we thought it I was. I think it's deeper than you think it is. The one position group on that team that I looked at, I'm sorry, there's two position groups that I look at on that team, and I'm like, holy crap, we don't have anybody. That is a thin group. It's the offensive line. And quarterback. Yeah. It, I, See, good, yeah, good yeah. solid C passing grades all so, around. So you're just saying he, he just hasn't had enough. much to okay. work with. Here's the thing: if I looked at, uh, if I looked at Riola and you had the O line equivalents of a Ty Robinson uh, and a Blaze Gunnerson and a Hutmacher and some of these other guys that they have over on the defensive side of the ball that Knighton has had to deal to work with. I'd be sitting here going like, okay, if they're performing like this, God, Raiola is horrible. I'm just, I mean, he might be holding it together with one of the, the thinnest rooms on the team right now. And, and, and the reality might be, that he's done the co- the O line coaching job of a lifetime. It, it's just there's only so much you can do with lumps of coal. Got another one, Owen? I do. This one comes from Brian. Uh, how do you explain? You guys touched on this earlier. How do you explain the QB turnovers? Will Sims ever play for Nebraska again? <laughs> That's what everybody would. <laughs> you're right. We are, the answer is no. Not, not just, unless he's needed to. Yeah, I just unless it's unless it's an injury situation, I don't think so. How about the one from Craig? I think there's one from Craig. It was a, it was a message. Yep, I got it right here. Okay, this one's from Craig. Hey, Travis, please talk about how a coach says he hates a program. Purdue's head coach. That is unacceptable that a head coach would say something like this. Purdue deserved to lose because F that, because oh, yeah, of screw that, that, and they guy. did. See, I looked at it as he is, 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 you were talking about Ryan Walters, who said, you know, he didn't like the end, talked about the hit that he took, that he's still seeing stars. I took it that he was joking. Maybe you did. I think it's all how you interpret it, right? I don't think he was joking. Really? I think he was doing the, oh, yeah, I'm buying in, all in, Purdue, screw Nebraska. Let's get, wow. let's create yeah. an us against them mentality. Yeah. It's that's that, how I took it. That's not, unless, unless you have a, pre, like, we know that PJ Here's, Fleck and Kirk okay. Ferentz don't like each other. Okay. So I, I loved it and hated it at the same time. But did you see Doran from North Carolina State, his comment? Yeah. First of all, you can't let a guest picker get under your skin you can't i get it but part of me was like dude i love that that's awesome part of me sitting there going yeah why would you let that bug you in the first place so here's my take on that if you were kirk ferentz would you ever say what what Ryan Walters said? He wouldn't. He's more out of the Tom Osborne mold of coaching. Yeah. Would you ever see Tom Osborne say no? That? Probably not. Yeah. Most I I think most coaches that have a huge amount of confidence in their ability to coach 
don't say that. I, shit. I, the, I, you don't get it as personal as that. But Michigan and Ohio State's fun to watch. How they won't say each other's school. I mean, there's there's hatred I between. I get there. it, but that's almost kind of a tradition. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. On yeah, that. it's. I get it. It's that team up north, and I don't have a problem with that. But he, that in and of itself is kind of a tradition. But it's not like Ryan. Well. Ryan Day got pissed earlier. Remember, he went yeah, off on I just, Lou I don't, I just, I, I don't understand the coaches becoming. It's the emotional Trump, about it's stuff. the Trump effect. I'm not kidding I, here. No, I agree. It's you're, you're, but you're also it's you got people looking outside themselves and outside of their program. Osborne's take was always, hey. Let the other team do what the other team's going to do. We're going to let the other team say what the other team's going to say. We're going to let the officials make their calls, whether it's good or bad. And we as a team, our job is to overcome all of it. Let me say this. Love Tom Osborne. He was always good to me. And Lee Barfneck can back me up. Tom Chattel can back me up. And I've been on the receiving end. Oh, he could be vindictive as all hell. If Tom Osborne had uh, had a problem with me, which he did at one time, he didn't do it publicly at a press conference. He called me and... That was an interesting phone call. I'm just saying. Okay, but he, at the same but time, that's private. Too, that's private. Yeah, if you're a coach versus a member of the media, um, or I mean, the Ryan Walters thing is like a coach versus another team. I mean, it's not like Walters is going to pick up the phone, give Matt Rule a call, and say, "Hey, I just want to let you know." Yeah. Freaking can't stand the the <laughs> red end. I mean, that's not going to happen. But I mean. From a media standpoint, dude, Ryan Day can beat Notre Dame, wait a week, and then give, dude, give Lou Holtz a call. Yeah, that's all it takes, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just, but that's the kind of thing where, I mean, there's ways to handle it. And in my opinion, that behind-the-scenes phone call carries way more weight than doing it in public. Because then, that, then it's going to create this war. It's like, okay, you're going to go after me in public, I'm going to go after you in public. I think, yeah. I think most people look at it as a guest picker is somebody, it's like, okay, Lou Holtz is different than a guest picker. Yeah. You know? But even if you're a guest picker, dude, don't call a school a basketball school during football season. Um, I The the last one on your list there, Owen, was my favorite, by the way. Let's end with that. Well, I got two more, so okay. which one do you want to end with? Uh, end with the very last one. The fumbles one? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. we, we can skip that one. Let's okay. just go to the so, last one. So the last one I got here for you comes from Don, and this was commented on YouTube, and, and I agree with him a little bit, but I have a highly contro- <laughs> I have a highly controversial opinion that will probably make some people angry. I like Travis Justice. He's great. So sorry. <laughs> I saw that. That was money. <laughs> of course, uh, last week uh, we took a beating. Uh, some dude down in Arizona didn't like me very much. I still don't know why. Because, I mean, you, again, we talked about this last week. We see it all the time on Twitter. People are just like, God, Rob, if you do that podcast just without Travis, it'd be so much better. And I'm like, yeah, no, no, that wouldn't work at all. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, we have fun. We try to be as honest and and open about everything as we can, and uh, that's why we do this all year long now. You know, back when we first started, we only, by the way, we we've been podcasting. You know, there's a bunch of fucking podcasts out there right now. Nobody has been bad. Well, maybe there might be a couple, but very few have been going as long as we have. We we were podcasting about ten years now. Uh, I think twenty thirteen. No, I think because uh, we did some Husker Hawkeye stuff right after I left Channel, yeah, Channel 3. That That's 20, 2010. Yeah, that was 2010. So we've been going for 13 years in, su- in some capacity. We've been doing this shit longer than most people before you even knew what a podcast was. And we got, I had no clue. You had to explain this Well, to me. and I got to thank Dave Remington for that because Dave Remington is the one who called me and goes, hey, I think you and Rob should do a podcast. And then he goes, I'll, I'll help you guys out. And, and we've been going ever since. We only used to do during the season – and now we're going year round, and Rob and I are going to start making a list of uh, interviews that we're going to have during the off season. It's going to be a lot of fun, but there's still a lot of season to play yet, and a lot of crazy shit can happen between now and, of course, the end of the season. If you haven't, uh, oh, by the way, Rob, we got a ray gun site up. 
So if nice. you want, we have the night and day difference shirt is up and ready for purchase. Love it. And the Sorry Dave t-shirts are back. More coming. More coming. Rob and I are going to put our creative brains together. But go to raygunsite.com. Go to the coll- the collaboration section. And on the collaboration section, just uh, you'll see a drop down. Uh, you'll see Doc Talk. And you can uh, get the shirts right there. The night and day difference is a pretty cool one. You can get it in red. Uh, the Sorry Dave t-shirt, you can get red. They're online only. We might be able to get some at uh, Husker Hounds and, of course, the Reagan store in Omaha. But ReaganSite.com, go to the collaborations, and you'll see Doc Talk. So for Dr. Rob, oh, what else? am I missing anything? Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow Dr. Rob on Twitter. We're at, on TikTok. On TikTok. Owen's going to be here late editing. He's like, oh, shit, i got to edit because we got to get, the, we gotta get the, uh, uh, the, the diagnosis out, at least one of them. For, for tomorrow. Uh, and if you haven't watched the diagnosis, tomorrow subscribe. Is it is. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. For Owen Justice, for Dr. Rob Zadisk, I'm Travis Justice. We'll see you next time on the Doc Talk Podcast presented by Betfred Sports. Sports.